Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be quick. I just wanted to show how I use the JFJ Easy Pro Plus. Um, this machine gets a lot of flack because really the only thing that's wrong with it is the instructions are really bad. The instructions that come with the... <clears throat> hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be pretty quick, but I just wanted to show people how I use the JFJ Easy Pro Plus. This machine, depending on the reviews or where you look, can kind of get mixed results. And it's really because the instructions that come with this thing are horrible. So the first thing you gotta do is just throw out the instructions. I would recommend, if you obviously if you never see this video, you probably don't even take my recommendation, but uh, look online you know, and find other people's methods as well. That's a lot of what I did and I just kind of melded a lot of things together into a really great process for me that gets the game to come out with like a mirror finish. So like I said, if you use their instructions, one or two things is gonna happen about 50 to 60% of the time, it's gonna leave a bunch of swirls in the back of the disc, or the disc is gonna to get too hot inside the machine and it's just gonna mess up the disc, the disc won't play. So this is my amalgamation, I guess, of a bunch of other people's methods. So I didn't come up with this on my own, I just brought it all together into what I feel like works best for me. But with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to get you guys a very good view. First thing we wanna do is, I'm gonna show you the disc. And the disc is going to be, sorry, I gotta open this up first. Of course, this is pretty hard to do with one hand. But, the disc is going to be Batman 2 DC Super Heroes for the Nintendo Wii. And this is pretty much what our disc looks like. So you can see it's been pretty worked over. It's a, it's a pretty scratchy disc. I would say maybe in the medium range, light maybe to medium. But so the first thing you want to do is I never use the stuff that comes with the machine because one, it's just expensive to repair. I mean, not repair, but expensive to replace. So really the only thing this thing does, it gets used to smudge stuff around on the pads, which you'll see. I actually use this Meguiar's uh, professional ultra finishing polish for the buffing and for the polishing. Now I do have like some ultra compound as well, but I feel like that probably did too harsh of a cut. So the first thing you want to do is you want to grab your white buffing pad and you just sit that in here and it just sticks on there. So you push it down. Now, before you put the actual Meguiar's on there or whichever one you decide to use, this is just what I use. It's pretty cheap and it's a big bottle. So it lasts a long time. Take you a little spray bottle of just water and you just want to hit it a couple times. And that's just going to dampen the pad some. And the reason why I do that is because when this thing starts up, if the pad is dry, it likes to sling it. So that's what you see all around. It's just like that's the JFJ stuff before I kind of got this process worked out, like I said, by looking at other people's stuff. But you just want to kind of just put your nice little amount around. You don't have to overdo it, but that's usually about how much I use. Again, I take the JFJ just to smush it around or kind of like you know smush it into the thing and that just also kind of stops it from slinging as well so you just do that the more you use it uh really the less stuff you have to use but this is about is what i use on it so we'll just sit this back down uh, another thing you want to do is you want to make something like this and it's just pretty much i took a microfiber towel and you just want to cut a hole in it and so it can slip over this little knob right here. So basically you're just slipping it over. And the thing you're doing this for is so that the disc doesn't press right against this, the middle of the disc. Because if you do, it will leave a ring right in the middle of your discs. Like literally like right in here, it'll just cut a ring into it. Will the game still work? Yeah, but you really don't want that. So just put your disc on there. Take your little microfiber towel here that you cut a hole in just kind of put that on trying to look at the phone and set this at the same time so just get that on there and you kind of want it as you can see kind of be in the size of the ring and then you just put 
your little locking screw tab here on it. And this is really what kind of leaves the ring on there. So just screw that. Ah, this is harder to do when you only have one hand. But hold the disc while you screw it. Let's get it on there pretty tight. You don't have to go crazy with it. Another thing that this towel is going to do is that when you're done, if you don't use a towel, this thing will stick on there like crazy. it will be hard to get off. So with the towel, it makes it a lot easier to break it loose. So we now have our stuff on there. We already have our stuff on there. So we can just close it down. Boom, close it. You want to flip it on. You never want to use it while it's on. <laughs> don't want to be putting your hands in there. And you want to do for one minute. So after you do it for a minute, you just sit there, you wait. All right, so the minute's up. So first thing you want to do is flip it off. Now, you don't have to turn it off. I mean, as long as you don't hit the button, the thing's not going to come on. But if you want to play it safe, flip it off. So you just want to open it up. You can kind of see the disc right there. I'm um, starting to look pretty good. But now we want to go into the polishing stage just to get any of the fine scratches that the buffing stage would do. So you just reach in, grab your pad out. You can set your pad down to the side. Now you want to grab your yellow buffing pad and you just sit that in there. You don't have to wipe off the disc. You just leave the residue on the disc from the from the uh, buffing stage. Same thing. Just take your little bottle of water and one, two, three, a couple sprays of water. Again, like I said, I use the same polishing compound, the Meguiar's for the polishing stage as well. Put some on there. Then we grab our JFJ stuff, literally just to kind of work it into the pad a little bit. You don't have to overwork it, but it just kind of helps smooth it into the pad. All right. Okay, I'm gonna sit that back down. And now that we got that done, you just literally close it back down. Make sure it closes. You want to flip it back on and then you want to do one minute again. Now, the like I said, the instructions are pretty bad. The instructions will have you do a buffing phase for about two minutes and then it'll have you do the polishing stage for one minute. But it doesn't tell you anything about spraying the water on it. Or anything like that and what happens is a lot of times these pads are pretty dry so especially like the first few times you use it before like your compound stuff and your polishing compound it's like a blue one that comes with it before that stuff kind of seeps into those pads and softens them up like it can get really hot on that disc and it will just warp the disc and the disc won't play the disc might come out looking good but then it still won't read because the heat had destroyed it that just built up while it was actually buffing or polishing the disc so that's why i like to spray the water because the water kind of accelerates the softening of the pad and it allows that compound to like really stick in that pad and really absorb and seep in there so but after that we're done so we want to flip it off again and i'm just going to try to open it up now this part is going to be really difficult because i only have one hand but now you just want to take this off. OK, I'm, let me see if I can break it with one hand and hold the disc. Yep. So it's a lot easier coming off when you put this uh, that little microfiber towel. You can really put like kind of anything you have there. I wouldn't obviously nothing that's uh, like too stiff or anything. But I like this little towel and you can just cut them out of other ones when they get too worked over. So, yeah, you kind of take this. Uh, matter of fact, while I have it there. The only thing I use that comes with the JFJ machine is this little anti-static spray cleaner. And I just spray a few sprays on that after it's done. Three. And then I use this blue towel to actually wipe off the disc. Uh, this is going to be difficult, so just bear with me. But, ah, uh, man, yeah. I'm going to wipe off the disc really quick. I don't, it's going to be hard for me to do this. But I'm going to try to do it while it's on here, but. Normally, you know, obviously you would take the disc out and do this, but <laughs> trying to show you guys. So it's going to be a little different. I'm going to just kind of spin it like that. And hopefully that helps get all the stuff off there. So if you see some stuff left on there, obviously you have to deal. You have to bear with me. I'm one handed right now. So let's see if I can flip this disc around. 
Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, so we can get it in some light. As you can see, I mean, the disc is super clean. So obviously I didn't get a chance to like really, you know, use the cloth to clean it all off. But as you can see, I mean, it's a thousand times better than what it was. And if you're wondering, yes, it's still, <laughs> still the same game. Uh, but yeah, we'd have to clean all that little residue off and stuff. But yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. If you use the right process with these machines, the game will work great and it'll come out looking like brand new. So just make sure you guys either, you know, use this. And I would suggest you actually use this video in conjunction with other stuff online. Uh, it really makes this machine shine and shows you what it can actually do. Uh, it's sad the rap these things get just because the instructions are so bad. You would think they would update their instructions, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, man. So if you're a small business and you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a resurfacer, one of these can really get the job done, especially, like I said, once you get a good process down. But as always, thank you guys for the support and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.